Hey guys, it's always Hope here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a few things you need to avoid doing on your iPhone in order to get a better user experience. I've seen many behaviors from iOS users and they're completely wrong. I'm going to show you what you could be doing on your iPhone that could be wrong and it could hinder the user experience. In this case, I'm going to help you get a better user experience, better battery life performance, and everything overall. Now as always, if you would like to stay up to date with the latest iOS news and Apple software updates, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you don't miss another episode. Now, first up is low power mode. Now, low power mode is a feature that obviously iOS will prompt you if you want to enable it when you reach 20% of battery life. And there's a reason for that because low power mode, what it will do, if you use low power mode all day, as I've seen many iOS users do in order to preserve battery, what you're doing is you're slowing down your iPhone. There's a reason why iOS only prompts you at 20%. And the reason is because low power mode will slow down your network performance. So it means that your iPhone will be slower in terms of downloading things if you're watching videos the quality are not going to be as good facetiming the quality video won't be as good so low power mode using it all day isn't necessarily a good thing it could make your battery last a bit longer yes if you do that all day but you're hindering the experience you're making your iphone slower downloads slower, videos are just not going to be as good quality and overall the performance isn't going to be what it should be if you use low power mode all day so avoid using low power mode all day if you're doing this on your iPhone. Next, I want to talk about Spotlight. Now, I've seen many users browse through their iPhone looking for applications throughout their folders, throughout the home screen, different pages, when you can simply just swipe down on the main page and just browse for whatever you want. So for example, if I'm looking for the podcast application, I don't have to browse through all my applications. All I have to do is swipe down and type in PO and podcast will populate very, very quickly. And same thing applies obviously for files as well. If you're looking for a file, maybe an email, you can just type in the keywords with in that email within Spotlight and you'll get all of those results directly in Spotlight. You don't have to dig around the software, your emails, or maybe your nodes, or just for looking for an application so much faster using Spotlight. So if you're not using Spotlight on your iPhone, you should definitely do it. It will save you time. Now, next I wanna talk about turning off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on your iPhone directly from Control Center. Now, if you take a look here at these toggles in Control Center, if I click on Bluetooth, it doesn't completely black out. It sort of grays out and it tells me here that the iPhone has disconnected from current Bluetooth device, which means you're not turning off Bluetooth when you go to Control Center. You're temporarily disconnecting from any Bluetooth device. And the reason Apple will do this is if you own an Apple Watch, you don't want to lose that connection. I understand that. But if you don't own an Apple Watch or if you just want to really turn off Bluetooth, you would actually have to go into settings and go into Bluetooth and then turn off Bluetooth. See the difference? It's blacked out now. It's not grayed out, but it's actually turned off if you go to settings. You can also ask Siri turn off Bluetooth and Siri will give you the option to turn on and off Bluetooth as you can see right there. Now here's another very common one. I've seen many users go into Safari. Once they go into Safari, they're done with what they're doing. They swipe up into the app switcher and close the application out. Many users continue to close out all their applications throughout their day when they're using the iPhone. And this is a big mistake. You're using more resources, more network performance, you're using more CPU performance, you're using more battery performance out of this, right? If you open up Safari, it takes time to load. If you quit the app just like so and just let it run in the background, when you get back to it, it doesn't have to reload. So it means it doesn't use more resources, therefore giving you better performance overall and also not using as much battery and everything like that. Now, iOS is designed to have these applications frozen in the background as they were not running and then they can get back to it directly from the app switcher without having to lose on performance and having to reload the application. Example right here, Safari is open. If I quit Safari, take a look here, is reloading Safari. If I just let it in the background here, nothing will happen and the app will be right there where I left off and therefore you will preserve battery over time and your iPhone will have better performance overall. And last but not least, I wanna talk about rearranging your apps and your icons on the home screen here. Now, many users do know that you can move icons around obviously just like so, or you can tap into multiple icons and rearrange them just like that and just place them anywhere on the screen you can select multiple obviously many users do know about this if you didn't know yeah you can actually do this but a bigger misperception is how to actually rearrange entire pages of your home screen and you can long press on the home screen here and you'll see this new menu pop up on the center here if you tap in there you can actually hide entire pages of apps or you can actually move pages to the front or to the back of the OS so this will be my main page now if we go back to the home screen that's my main 
landing page. If I go over, that's going to be my secondary and I can rearrange depending on how many pages I have available. Of course, you can also uncheck any page that you don't want to make visible and now you only have one as you can see right there. So rearranging your home screen, I've seen many users just drag one app at a time and drag one folder at a time to rearrange the home pages. All you have to do is just swipe through pages depending on how many you have and again, you can also hide uh, entire pages of application directly from the home screen by using this feature as well. And I hope this helps you out a bit and these are some of the most common misperception, most common mistakes iPhone users make every day. Hopefully this will help you save time, performance and battery on your iPhone. Let me know if you know any additional ones or how many of these did you actually know? Let me know in those comments down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.